everyone, I'm Jeff Haynes, Senior Editor of Video Games at Common Sense Media, and we're going to drop into the Destroyed Courthouse section for The Last of Us Part 2. Now, as you can see up ahead of us, there's a very frightening looking creature. Now, this is known as a clicker, which is one of the more dangerous monsters in the game. It actually hunts using a mix of noise and echolocation to find prey. So we're going to try to sneak around. Ellie and Dina have just reached uh, this courthouse and they're going to try to get out of its uh, line of hearing, shall we say, so that they can sneak up behind it and hopefully take it out with a stealth kill. As you can tell, The Last of Us Part 2 is definitely for mature audiences only. Of course, because the clicker uses uh, its hearing to try to find targets, Ellie kind of uh, is going to use the exact same thing, using her hearing to try to isolate exactly some of the threats that happen to be on this top level. Of course, in the other room, there seems to be a threat that's very, very close by. That's what's known as a runner, which is one of the uh, humans that have been infected, but they still are a little bit humanistic. They happen to have their own threats similar to the clickers, however, because they wind up screaming, alerting a lot of the other monsters and infected as to where they happen to be so they can swarm and attack whatever they start to be uh, calling out. We're going to grab it and instead of using it as a human shield, we're just going to take it out before it alerts that clicker that something happens to be wrong. Now, The Last of Us Part Two uh, takes place four years after the original game, where the United States of America and arguably the world was devastated by a mutant virus that transformed much of the population into these infected creatures that you see. As time went on, the, the infection started to progress and they got worse and worse and even more monstrous, leading into completely different forms of the infected beasts. Now, Ellie and her girlfriend Dina happen to be in Seattle in this courthouse because they've acquired documents and they've gotten certain intelligence telling them that there could be supplies and even some gasoline that they need to open up some locked gates with some generators uh, in other parts of the city, allowing them to complete their mission. I'm not going to spoil exactly what their mission happens to be, but needless to say, that means that you're going to have to start looking and hunting for a lot of these vital items in some of the destroyed buildings, as you can see, a lot of uh, the the ground has started to be uh, seeded to a lot of grass and other items because the uh, courthouse has been destroyed so much. One of the interesting things about The Last of Us Part 2 is that Many of the places that you see as you're traversing one part of the city to the other can actually be entered and explored, and you can hunt through them for different supplies, different items to fill out the lore of what exactly happened in that world, or sometimes you'll wind up running into different uh, creatures because the world kind of is its own living, breathing microcosm of what happened uh, to the country at this point in time. In fact, what's really interesting about it is while there's a lot of infected in the courthouse, every so often you might find, as you go through a different building, say, that a human faction, whether it's a military faction or some other group, could be hunting for you, especially if you happen to annoy or anger them. And if you're lucky enough, you could choose to alert one to the presence of another. For instance, if you know that there happen to be infected in one section of a building and soldiers start looking for you. You could make a noise, get the infected to swarm those soldiers, and then you could sneak by while both of the infected and the humans start fighting themselves. They're fighting each other, shall we say. Now, of course, that also means that everybody is looking and hunting for exactly the same supplies frequently in these destroyed buildings. We've managed to gather enough just in case things start to get a little bit more violent, so we're going to start crafting things. As you can see here, if you happen to have some of the items and you know the recipe for them, you can make healing kits, Molotov cocktails, even stun grenades. And because we're not entirely sure if we're going to be able to make it past the runner that's in the hallway or the clicker that happens to be up ahead of us, we've just gone ahead and crafted a Molotov cocktail. Hopefully we can actually sneak our way through, maybe we can actually take out this other clicker if we're lucky, and we don't have to make things a little bit noisy, possibly endangering us or getting us attacked by other infected in the process. So we're just going to sneak up really quietly and grab this one clicker and take it out before it can do anything. Now, fortunately for us, while we're taking out that clicker, Dina is also going on the other side and she's taking out the runner. Unfortunately, 
we still haven't found the supplies that we're looking for. There's no gas on the top floor, which means that we're going to have to go somewhere else. That leads us right here to this contextual clue where we're going to have to push open the door with Dina's help. Every so often there will be contextualized clues that you'll need to use uh, these button prompts for. That could be pushing open doors, that could be uh, lifting yourself or your partner from uh, the ground floor to a raised platform, or any other things that you need just simply to help you uh, accomplish your mission. Of course, as we're going down the stairs, you can see a lot of the decay and the destruction of this courthouse so you can see that a lot of the vines and a lot of the grass have started to make their way through some of the destroyed windows and a lot of the other parts of the building have been really wrecked and and broken out now this is the first floor so we're basically getting our way to the courthouse lobby but there's only not uh, there's only one office here and it's the bailiff's office maybe we'll find the supplies that we need there or if not the supplies, maybe we'll find keys to help us get to some of the items that we need. It's not looking that good, is it? Not really. Well, this is really kind of going to be a bleak game, and as you can see in the lobby, it looks like some of these soldiers happen to have met a very gruesome end in the courthouse. You're going to find a lot of this in The Last of Us, but you'll also find, like I mentioned earlier, some of the lore. So, unfortunately, it looks like Benny never really made it to that meeting with his friend, and uh, he kind of paid the price for it in the lobby courthouse up against that wall. Well, we're going to keep looking for supplies, but... Just because we find a locked door doesn't mean that we're completely cut out from any of the items that happen to be in that office. Because it is a, a post-apocalyptic game, we can break that window, whether it's using a bottle, a brick, or a gun butt. We're just going to use that bottle, smash our way through, grab a replacement, and hop through the broken window over the desk and get in to find out whatever might be uh, kept away in this office. We're also going to unlock the door just so that Dina can possibly uh, help us out or start looking for some other items too. And it gives us another way in and out so we don't have to keep hopping the door or the desk. Of course, we've just managed to find a machete, unfortunately lodged in the chest of that poor soldier right there. It looks like he might have been a target because he was a captain in the military. That doesn't really look that great. I think we probably should try to get out of here as soon as we can. Uh, we should also take note that there's a code here for uh, some confiscated items. Of course, this is a courthouse. People would have been captured or arrested and arraigned for possible crimes that they committed, even while the city was falling. So we might need to uh, see if we can find some of the supplies that we were looking for in these confiscated items. Then again, we also have a list of what they're calling agitators, so we might not want to stick around that much in the courthouse, just in case those people happen to be staking out the courthouse for anybody looking for supplies. It just seems like it's possibly a bad time. Now, along our searches, sometimes you might find these items like training manuals, which will help upgrade Ellie and her skills so that she's a little bit more capable of taking on this uh, apocalyptic threat. This one, in particular, allows her to craft items a little bit differently. So, for instance, that means that sometimes the healing kits that she makes might heal a lot more damage. It might mean that the melee weapons that she builds or that she maintains, like the machete that she just found, will last a little bit longer in combat. You have to definitely keep your eyes out for all of the training manuals because they'll really be useful. And if you can find some of the pills that you see scattered around in some of the environments, you can use those to help you focus on learning completely new skills. So we've just found a safe. I'm going to try that code that was on that white erase board to see if that one's going to wind up working so we can get at some items. Not all of the safes happen to be, or some of the lockers or, or code combinations happen to be so close by, and they're not always six-digit combinations. We're just lucky that it happened to be exactly in the right location. So we see a pill bottle, we see some alcohol and some nuts and bolts. We're going to take all of that stuff, add it to our backpack so that if we find a safe location... We can sit down, we can start to really customize and build out some of the supplies that we have for the items that we need. We're just going to clear the rest of the first floor, just make sure that we are not leaving anything behind. Looks like the front doors are still locked up and boarded tight. Definitely looks like these uh, metal detectors right here, they're not going to be detecting anything anytime soon. There's no power in the city. Unfortunately, without there being any power, that means we can't call up an elevator. So we're going to have to slide down an elevator cable to the garage floor. 
this is exactly how horror movies start. Going into a place you don't want to go in the dark to do things you know that you have to, but you just really don't want to. So we're going to drop into this elevator, which is now full of water. Again, this is another warning sign. It really is just not starting to look good at all. But Ellie and Dina have to do it, so they're going to pry open the elevator doors as best as they can using one of those contextual clues. So, of course, as they wind up making their way through, making the noise of that, uh, another infective runs right out of the shadows. Looks like the stealthy approach is not going to be an option any longer, so we're getting into a combat sequence where we're going to use that machete that we found to try to take out as many as we can because it's just starting to fall apart. Of course, the reach of the machete is useful against that clicker to keep it away, but of course it lodged and broke inside the clicker's chest, and Dina's in trouble, so we're just going to run up, stab that runner before it can actually try to bite Dina, and we get a slight breather. It's very, very slight, because there's still more infected coming out of the darkness. We're just gonna have to reach for our gun and try to take out as many as we can before we get swarmed. So, all we can do is try to make sure that our shots aim true, that's one. Here comes another one coming around the car. And uh, he's a little bit too quick, and so he's just grabbed us. Dina stabs him in the back, giving us a second, and we can run up and stab that one. And then there's one final clicker coming out of the darkness and we're safe. That's a really quick look at some of the action that you'll find in The Last of Us Part Two. It's an epic emotional tale, but it's definitely going to be for a lot of mature audiences only. But for top picks and advice to fit your family, make sure to visit us at commonsensemedia.org.